tremendous success of the Rays and Spots, frankly, has been that they are entertaining. Good feeling characters, going through their moves, being cool, and it's a delight. Will Vinton has been bringing Clay to life for more than 15 years, but nothing before has attracted attention like the California Raisins. Oh, look at the cheering throngs, huh? Yeah, obviously, you can't put tennis shoes and sunglasses on everything. Um, a, a lot of people would like to. It's a fantasy land that you're, that you're making here, isn't it? I guess. Yeah, it's kind of reality for us. <laughs> OK, what's the frame count? 46. Okay. Crucial to bringing the characters to life, though, is probably the talent of the animator sculpting these, these characters one frame at a time. In a scene like this where you have a lot of characters, a mistake could mean uh, coming back in here and spending another two or three days reshooting something, and it's always so much fun the second time around. <laughs> the clay material is literally moved, so you can see the material move. You know, you can see the, the, the stuff kind of uh, come to life in the way that, you know, a flesh comes to life. You'll see the animators all the time using a mirror, um, looking at their own expressions. And often as not, the characters will uh, take on uh, a quality of the animator. Will Vinton's characters seem almost human, partly because they are. What? All the movement of the clay figures is based on live action. This move here. Now the animator liked the fact that Ray kicked his leg because that's one of Ray Charles' signatures. And this is the candy being blown away. <laughs> that's sweet. So that's what you made out of the yeah. film we were looking at there. Right. It's about five and a half months worth of work. Five and a half months. <laughs> Oh. Everyone dreams of making it big, even raisins. And the big dream shared by every raisin is to be big enough for post-raisin brand. You never know. You can't uh, create a phenomenon as it sort of happens, I think. It's the California Raisins. In our 48 hours, the clay animators filmed just two seconds of this commercial. Finishing it took almost a thousand hours more. With the California Raisins, because big raisins make a big difference. California Vineyards. Don't you know that I heard it through the grapevine? Sounds better than what I got. Sweet. 
I hate to interrupt their conversation, but it is time for you, Bill. No, what, it's, what time, you it's time there? for dinner. It's time for dinner. Well, what you know, a that? lot of people have been bothering me and uh, saying that I don't eat, I look <laughs> sick, all that kind of stuff we covered about three months ago. There you go, folks. I'm eating. Mark Urson, one of our engineers, brought this in. This is codfish. Rock cod, I think. Some kind of cod. It's cod that I enjoy eating. And I do have a placemat down. I want the management to know that. I'm not messing up the uh, studio here. But help yourself. That's thank good you. stuff. And oh, Mark did you. a good job of cooking that himself, by the way. Did oh, thank Look you. out for the garlic. You won't be able to kiss anybody. I can after smell it. <laughs> All right. Bakersfield Dodgers play a doubleheader tonight down in Palm Springs, and tonight is the night the B-Dodgers can make up some ground in the Southern Division. Last night, B-Dodgers won their fifth straight, so tonight they hope to keep that streak alive. Now, I mentioned, though, and Frank Viola lost his bid to win his 20th straight at home today. The Twins lost their ballgame in Burley. You know about Frank Viola. He is a great pitcher, and he was undefeated for 20 games, actually 19 at home. This was his 20th. And lost. What are you laughing about? He's he, scooting away from me because I took a bite of your fish. Well, the garlic is awfully strong here. But <laughs> yeah. It's not that Joe Carcione bad. must have prepared that. Huh? <laughs> this is, I want to tell you something. Seriously, it is excellent fish. And for those of you who may want some. Let's watch Bill eat dinner. Well, you can if you want. I don't mind at all. <laughs> I like garlic, but I don't like to be a spectator at a garlic fest. I'll save you a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Next up. What? Separating facts <laughs> from time-honored legends. Sounds fishy to me. Well, it was another 100-plus day. Rusty Shoop joins us now with details. Same old thing. Whoa, what is that? <laughs> that is, it is uh, not I. What is that smell? It's Bill Manders' garlic. Huh? He's still here. I know. Oh, He's breathing boy. down my Ooh. neck. I almost Very fell out of strong, my chair there for a minute. <laughs> yeah, another hot day. <laughs> Another hot day here in the valley. And it's a hot up north where they grow a lot of garlic, too. Do you know that? Is yeah. it? Gilroy. It's hot up there, too. Gilroy, that's Yeah. Gilroy, and they grow a lot of garlic up there. And, uh... In Hondo, there was a guy named Gil, and there's one named Roy, and they, uh, they founded a place. Yeah, they were the only two that could tolerate each other's breath, is what I understand. I don't know if that story is true, but nevertheless. Another hot one in Bakersfield, uh, all over Kern County. This is the 11th day in a row now that we have been 100-plus. Some great local high school football rivalries about to get underway about an hour from now. Bill Manders standing by, Lisa sitting on pins and needles, Garces and Arvin. Should be a great game. i got to tell you something, though. Last week, of course, was a great football game. And Mark Urson, the guy that's doing the switching in our control room right now, that's the guy that flips the buttons and does the knobs at the director's discretion, of course, presented uh, Lisa with this. I guess he's a BHS graduate. And presented her with this trophy. BHS 22, Garces 10, September 9th. Well, let me just say that this is a perpetual trophy, yes. and Mark, you get this back next year. Ah. <laughs> see what happens. It's kind of funny, you know, the farmers around here really think I give a damn about them. I mean, hell, if I could get paid not to work the way they get paid not to grow crops, should I be retired by now? Yeah, growing up in Wyoming, I used to watch Burley on the satellite. Kind of made me nauseous. <coughs> <coughs> a Chevron oil company today introduced Bakersfield Minority High School students to the world of petroleum engineering. The students met this morning with company officials to learn more about what they need to concentrate on now to prepare for possible careers. I'm learning more about environmental engineering because I didn't know really that much about it. Mostly I just was interested in chemical engineering, but I mean, now I can see that there is, you know, definite a demand. You know, it's always... <laughs> well, we have a well, lot of different uh, options there. And that, that part that you saw wasn't live, but we are right now, and uh, we <laughs> we'll apologize, and we'll be back. In just a minute. <laughs> Let's get our act together. Yeah. Good evening, bud. I'm going to try this one again. My mother tells me that the first words I ever spoke were when I was five years old. And those words were, Mom, I need story ideas. Actually, I love being an assignment editor. It's very gratifying. It's kind of like being a teacher for the mentally disabled, only the reporters are a lot more difficult to teach. It's quantity, not quality, as an assignment editor at 23 News. So long as I can fill up an hour show, I don't really care how worthless the stories are. The traditions of religion run deep, and more than a few wars have been caused by religious differences. But in Bakersfield, two religions have joined, not to argue, but to share. 23's Lynn Sage reports. Two 
denominations, one of the Christian faith, one Jewish, don't often worship together under the same roof. But this isn't the first time that Cain African Methodist Episcopal and Temple Bethel have shared prayer. Although they worship the same God, there are deep differences between theologies, and that's why they're here. 55 to 62, and that's the weather word for this evening. Have a great time if you go to the fair. Hope to see you out there. Temperature is scooting up, isn't it? Scooting up. That'll be a nice fair weekend, though. I'm looking forward to it. Come All right. Come on, Jim. All right, come on, Jim. Uh, stand by, and uh, we'll cut to the 23 newsroom with Jim Scott, if he's there. Jim, are you there? I guess I'm here, Burley. I should be have a little feedback over here. But coming up tonight on 23 News at 11, residents in the Westchester area are concerned about a proposed traffic corridor through their neighborhood. They're meeting tonight, and we'll tell you what happened at that meeting. Also, 23's Lynn Sage will be live from the Kern County Fair. She'll have a report tonight on the Tom Jones concert for those of us who can't be there. Back to you in the studio. Now live, 23 News at 11. Well, meanwhile, earlier today, it was time for out with the old and in with the new. The 1985 grand jury final report was released, and the new grand jury was impaneled. And I guess we'll have a look at that story a little bit later on. Jiminy Lane, I guess for the moment at least, we'll throw it back to you. We were riding in the Whiskey Flat Days Parade. We were about halfway through the parade, and I looked down, and there was this little boy sitting on the curb. Well, he looked up, and he saw me, and his eyes just got huge, and he pointed, and he said, Daddy, Daddy! And I realized I was taking my community involvement much too far. At 58 years old, she's emerging from the shadow of her longtime sweetie, Mickey. Minnie Mouse is making a comeback. The new Disney management says it's time for many to change with, change with the time. <laughs> Minnie Mouse has, has dumped those frumpy polka dots and pinafores and jazzed herself up. And she's described as a rodent, rodent version. <laughs> I can hardly contain myself. Uh, she described as a rodent version of Madonna with her junk jewelry. <laughs> that story didn't amount to a thing. I, we used up our time. Good night. Have a nice weekend. You know, being the beefcake at 23 News is a tough job, but someone's got to do it. You know, I really can't understand why they don't let me drive a news car. I mean, after all, I can crack one up as good as Espinosa. You know, some people think that shooting is our first love, but what we really love doing is filling out those damn DR reports. In our... I want to get our camera guy to John, if he, if he can go all the way down on Sandy, because uh, Sandy's got some interesting shoes on well, also, if John can get a shot of those. Being an intern at Channel 23, what can I say? It's a dream come true. When I first came here, I hoped to get a job of just wandering around the station aimlessly. But unfortunately, John DeWarty already had that job. Where would I like to be 20 years from now? Either anchoring a major market newscast or taking orders from Laura Worland. Lots of sunshine in the afternoon. With that in mind, let's go take a look at one of our cameramen here. Pioneer Village, and there he is, Jerry Brewer, I think. Isn't that Jerry Carl? No, that's a tree. Oh, that's a tree? I thought it was a totem pole or something. Coming from radio, I had a past life as a slave, but being in TV now, I feel like I've moved up to an indentured servant. Working for John Prophet, it's like a religious experience. Remember the crucifixion? Of course, the real reason I came back to Bakersfield wasn't to better myself. I just wanted to help John Smith get a job. I love the 23 News audience because they're so, they're so stupid. I just told you I was not gonna talk about it. <laughs> 